Hello everyone and welcome to more TT read. Nah, hello everyone and welcome to more reading TTRPG horror stories. My name is Duke and this is wife. I am wife. Duke, do you want me to do that for you? No, nope. <laughs> this is going in the video. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching and supporting the series. It does mean the world to us because, again, I get a film with my wife, which I really enjoy doing. And also, it's awesome to see all the constructive criticism and the conversations happening in the comments with these as well. I'm just, I'm just happy how we built it. Remember, these videos are for us to just give advice for anyone in found in these situations or to help avoid these situations. You can take our advice. You don't have to take it to our advice. You can listen to it. You don't have to listen to it. You, you could just be here for the drama. We don't care. You can throw it out the window. You can throw it out the window. <laughs> yeah, Which well, plushie do you have? It's not a plushie, but it's bait. It's from Dragon Prince. We love bait. You ready for our two stories today? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So these two, very excited about. I've been looking forward to reading these stories off. This first one is called... For a paid game, DM decided to spend the first 90 minutes with two players and sidelines everyone else. I don't know why, but I was playing in a game which I paid to be a part of. I thought it would be a good experience, but no. DM spent 90 minutes focusing on the role play of two players, who they are, their relationship with each other, and who was the better fighter. The thing is, this is session one. These two players got the full spotlight for one and a half hours while everyone else got asked, oh, what are you doing at the end of it? After the hour was up, we had like three minutes of our own time before someone arrived with a special mission for the two characters from before and the rest of us were just told to go along with them. Then it was still all about these two players and their characters after that, how they will achieve the mission and basically how the rest of us are just sidekicks to them. So in this paid session one, I think I've gotten 10 lines in to say in total across three hours now and whatever anyone's character can do, one of the two can do it better. Not just that, but anytime anyone talks to someone else in character, one of the two will speak over them or if we're talking to another player, they'll speak to each other and the DM will draw attention back to them and away from whatever anyone else is doing. I'm not sure if it's entitled to me to say this, but I didn't pay for a professional DM to be sidelined the entire time. There was no indication of favoritism or favorites during session one, and the DMs seemed super friendly and nice, except the part where no one else got to do anything all session except these two players wanted. At the end of the session, I just walked because it felt like I had wasted my money and time. And now, a word from our sponsor. Mm. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Do you know what a VPN is? Jar sorry, what? It's a virtual private network that hides your IP address and protects your online activity with secure encryptions, keeping your personal information safe from prying eyes. I don't remember this being in the script. With over 30 million downloads, private internet access encrypts your internet connection using top-notch servers, making your personal data secure and unbreakable. Right, right. Yeah, but what about letting down your hair? Right. You know, watching Netflix without PIA is like me letting down my hair, but only you getting a lock of it. Uh, uh, okay, um... Rapunzel, let down more knowledge of private internet access! Private internet access offers lots of entertainment perks! It works with all major streaming services, letting you access more content globally! It's available for all platforms, and one subscription can protect unlimited devices! You got them. Now bring it home! But using our link in the description, fans of the channel can grab an 83% discount on private internet access! That's just two dollars and three cents a month! And they also get four extra months completely for free! You did it, Rapunzel! You did it! Does that mean I'm finally ready for Broadway? <laughs> And now back to the video. Are there any clarifications in the comments? Because I am missing like three important things. Looking through the comments, the OP didn't really help with any of the comments. Mm. One of the comments said, maybe the two players bought the VIP package and you only <laughs> the normal one. And OP said, I actually asked that at some point and the DM sounded confused and expressed that they would never do that. So here's okay, my that's thoughts. Actually, that's actually pretty funny though. Yeah. Here's my thoughts with it. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because we could all slip into this 
and that it, this professional d- dungeon master played with the two main characters before. And so they unintentionally made them the focus because they already knew who these people were compared to not knowing the other people. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and saying that's possibly what what happened. Has this OP played before? I have no because idea. That does not with, clarify it. Because that goes with what you're saying is have they played before and maybe the DM uh, knew these two characters already and knew that they knew how to play it and maybe the other people in OP maybe were newer and was trying to use these characters as more examples, but then it didn't turn out to be that way. Mm. So there's that. But again, there was no conversation. But right. to, to your point, though, that's why I abruptly was like, okay, wait, has this guy played a lot before? Right. So uh, let me see. Because I've been in sessions during that. Like when I was first learning, I yeah, definitely they're... relied on other characters yeah. to take the spotlight to show me, oh, this is okay. Oh, this is okay. Okay, let me try this out now kind of thing. Like, that happens. But again, like, I, I, I feel like if they're paying for it, they might have played more. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. No, you bring up a really good point on that. I didn't even think about that. I'll go into this little rant, and this will be the really the only thing I'll say. Um, I, I have been a dungeon master where I have been paid to be someone's dungeon master. And when that has happened, one of the things I really, really try to do is I try to watch every one of my players. I try to see how each one of them are feeling. I'm trying to see who's talking more, who's talking less. I'm seeing how they engage to certain questions and how I can best engage them in the story. So one of the things that I will point out is... With these two having a spotlight, the dungeon master at the end would say, oh, and what are you guys doing at the end of it? So for that, that never usually works out for a dungeon master. It it doesn't because as the player, you don't know exactly what's going on. You may not know what's around you. Like we don't have any type of visuals that could really help us understand what is happening around us. So as a dungeon master, at those points that could possibly helped this player feel more engaged and like their character was doing something was say let's say you're a druid Mm -hmm. i would say something along the lines of like what would your character do in this scenario as like a druid instead of saying like oh how, how do your characters go about this i'm instead imposing a question to you to make you think okay what would my druid do okay maybe my druid is all about plants and so you would say something along the lines of like oh i'm gonna go and see if there's any vendors selling plants or anything like that that i could grab and then that changes it and that that's when a conversation could start for this story's sake hour and a half on two people is kind of a long time if there was not any type of interruption to check in with the other players especially being session one was it session one or session session two session one or session zero Uh, the op wasn't clarifying it too well okay so it was like one of the first sessions and that is a very long time because your first session can set the mood on how future sessions can go and last thing i'll say about it is if you're a paid dm make sure all the players are getting their money's worth out of it like yeah that that sucks for the people who couldn't play a lot because they paid to just kind of sit there for three hours why two people got the spotlight and again nothing against the two people well maybe a little bit because it sounded like (laughs) the two people did talk over and did have like a little bit of main character syndrome. That's where I'm thinking the dungeon master and the two players knew each other before. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm pointing it out. And it's okay to have those moments when two characters are the main focus. If the, if all the players have an understanding that this is what is going to happen, like, okay, we're at a big point for these two players. This is their character arc. It's going to be focused on them. And when everyone knows that, they could have had such a better experience because like as a player for me as well, it's fun to see other players backstory and just see how they play it out. And it's great. And if they want, if they take most of the time, that is perfectly fine, but it's like, you're invested. They weren't invested because they just kind of went, eh, your side characters. To that point though, and in my finishing conclusion, just back to the question of what was their conversation beforehand? Because I know when you set up these campaigns, sometimes you have, individual storylines that the dm is going to plug in 
into the campaign. Mm -hmm. And so this could have been these two characters' storyline or a big part of their storyline, which is fine, although it happens very early on. So that's a little sus again. But like, if that wasn't clarified, then that's why it was confusing because it's like, okay, wait, are we actually focusing on their storyline right now? Like, are we being supportive to them? Yeah. Or did we just not get the memo? So again, that communication needs to set those expectations because it is exciting to live out your backstory a little bit or a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And it's cool. But if no one knows about that for everybody else, that's where I can see this guy was really turned off on it. So one thing that I want to add to these videos is not all TTRPG is bad. Yes, what we're reading is, it's called TTRPG Horror Stories, and it is a subreddit, and not all D&D slash TTRPG stories are bad. There's so much good that does happen with stories, and sadly, just the, just the bad ones get said the loudest, because people like drama. That's yeah. why we do these videos. That's why we do them. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, um, between every horror story, I want to give a fun story from my Discord community. They left suggest or they left stories of like funny, awesome moments that happened in their campaigns. So I'm going to read off a, a funny story after each horror story to, you know, balance things out. So this one is from uh, Jim Bob Gamer. Ah, Jim Bob. Know him well. <laughs> and his story is... <laughs> One of my players pulled the Jack of Spades rogue from the deck of many things. They didn't know what would happen until they were later on their way to complete a quest. They found an old man begging for money. The other players donated and he was grateful. The player who pulled the rogue card donated and the old man looked livid. The old man, whose name is Oliver the Old, then started proclaiming that person to be their mortal enemy. Every member of the party was confused and was even more confused when Oliver challenged the player to a 1v1. They agreed and began their battle the player goes first and hits about 20 damage oliver is still standing and pulls out two large battle axes everyone is surprised oliver hits for a decent chuck of their health the battle then proceeds with the player nearly getting knocked unconscious until another party member intervenes rolls a nat 20 on knocking oliver unconscious and proceeds to hit him <laughs> and proceeds to hit him in the head so hard one of his eyes explodes <laughs> they left then went to do their mission well that was great let's keep going what <laughs> It's just more of, he punched him in the face so hard, his eye exploded, and then they just went, all right, let's go to our next mission. No questions needed here. Like, <laughs> what? That's awesome. I love it. All right, next one. So this one really, really got to me, probably and not in the way that you might think. So I'll, I'll explain here in a bit, but the title really catches your attention. It is called Sorry you're not autistic. You can't play with us. I hope this is clarified. <laughs> it, it is clarified. Do not worry. Do not worry. This is clarified. This story requires some background. I GM an online game for my group of friends. Somewhat recently, we've had a new player join our group who wanted to bring her husband along. For context, he is autistic and I am not. A couple other players in our group are autistic, so it's nothing new. And the rest of us are all mature and understanding people to boot. It became clear that the husband of the new player was not a fan of how I run games. He didn't like my homebrewing setting. He didn't like my hard adherence to the system rules. And clearly my games just weren't for him. No issues. It happens. But I'm not about to change the way I run for someone new, especially when myself and all my other players enjoy the way I run things. I tell him this in a much nicer and softer tone when he messages me about his frustrations, after he'd already made up his mind about wanting to drop out. The first red flag was that despite his wife having plenty of fun and, com and complimenting the game and setting, she dropped out along with him. She even told me that she wished she could stay, but... She felt guilty about doing so. Despite game drama, this couple is still in our friend group and we hang out with them still doing other things. This is where the horror story starts. The husband expresses that he wants to start another game for the autistic people in the group. The only problem is there's only three people total who fit that bill, including him. So that would be one dungeon master and two players, it sounds like. Hardly enough for a game, so he starts stealthily inviting people through Discord DMs, eventually inviting the whole group except me. He tells them that they're allowed in because they're, quote, 
allies. Well, lo and behold, they all (laughs) start. Valentina's an ally. Say it, Valentina. (laughs) I'm ally. Sorry. (laughs) Well, lo and behold, they start. They all start to wonder where I am. So a few of them ask, and he makes up the excuse that I declined joining because the game wasn't my style. Only he's not quick enough, and people have already began asking me why I'm not in the new game. And when I tell them what new game, they realize that something's up. He gets called out for lying, and it comes to light for everyone that not only was I not invited in the first place, but he did this to purposely exclude me from the rest of the group. Now knowing the full story, everyone else is taking my side and telling him that he was in the wrong. He tries to make excuses, call me ableist, and trying to convince everyone that I'm a bad GM because I don't yes and any character idea that gets floated my way. Unsurprisingly, this doesn't gain any traction and he has resolved himself to not speaking. (laughs) So let me clarify. (laughs) This is a little more entertaining than Yes. (laughs) So let me clarify why this struck a chord. The main purpose why I want to talk about this story was because this person, the, the husband, set up a group to exclude one person. Yes. And I can say that from experience, that freaking sucks. Like that hurts more than just being told, no, I don't want you in the game. It's like the cool friends creating a group and then you are not invited. And then that makes you think, oh, I'm not one of the cool people. Like that hurts. It <laughs> messes with you. One of my experiences that, that has just stuck and it, it has stayed with me. And th- this is the problem. This is where it's like, hopefully people can avoid doing this and just talk face to face about it was there was a, there was a D and D channel that would host many one shots and that would have guests on all the time. And for me, like I really wanted to be asked to join on. Like I I did want to be a part of that group because I saw people who I did want to collab with. I wanted to get to know them X, Y, Z. And then finally there was a guest star that got put on And that guest star reached out to me saying, hey, I'm going to be on this channel and I asked you to be a guest star with me. And I was like, oh my gosh, cool. That's awesome. Like, finally, I get to be a part of that. And then, yeah, here comes the butt because the guest star said like, they're going to reach out to you shortly. And I was like, okay, cool. And then after a week, I didn't hear nothing. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to reach out to them and just like, see what's going on. Maybe get something to clarify on. So I reached out and I was like, hey, I heard so-and-so was going to be on. They said they wanted me on. I just, I just want to know what was going on. And to put it this way, I can't remember the exact words, but this is how it felt. It was, oh yeah, um, he fits in the group, but, but you don't. <laughs> like that's how it felt. And oh my gosh, it hurt. Like I, t- to be fair, I had like nothing to really gain out of it. I, had nothing to benefit from this. I just wanted to play with them. That that was really about it. But to be told that I didn't fit the bill of what they wanted, which was hard because like, we'll put it this way. This group was very much into everyone is welcome here. Mm-hmm. But what they said to me was, oh, everyone's welcome here under our standards. Mm-hmm. And you don't fit that standard. But then they would go proclaim that everyone's welcome here like no matter what you are welcome here but then that's what they said to me and it it hurt (laughs) it sucked so needless to say that this story made duke have a little bit of ptsd it did it really freaking (laughs) did that sucks more than just being told no like it really i've been told no before and i'm like okay that's fine but being told oh you're not you're not worthy enough to be in this group oh Sorry. And anyway. to, to your story, it was, yeah, yeah, sit down, sit back. I'm sorry, sitting down. I'm getting heated. <laughs> to, to Duke's story as well, though, he was watching this group be put together. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's hard, like, for anybody to watch a group being put together and think, well, wait a second. I can play with those people. I know those people. I've played with them or I know them mm-hmm. before. I'd like to get to know them more. And then continually, like, just not get the invite. Like, it seems very childish, but, like, it still hits. It you hits know, hard. it still hits. Like, I don't know. It's different for everybody. It, it does kind of seem elementary where, like, as a kid, you see the kids playing and, like, you come up and you're like, can I play too? And it's like, mm. Yeah. 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 That was the same <laughs> feeling. That was the same 
feeling? It's like being in elementary school and you can't play with the kids and they're just like, mm, no. no. My mom said I can't play with you. And they're like, run away. It's, uh, it, again, it seems so funny, but it's something that happens the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, but to this story, though, I find it very, very interesting because I think this this will be something that I want to say might be controversial or mm -hmm. just maybe a hot topic for people sometimes or other people might feel this way is when there's a particular group that has a label in this story's case it was individuals with autism mm -hmm. this guy decides to reverse and be a hypocrite and be like oh we're going to exclude the non-autistic person and it's like hmm? well <laughs> yes how but does that work? He, he put the label on that to mainly make sure that one person doesn't join because remember he invited everyone else in the party because they were allies this was just the worst way to go about it it's all about the intention behind the action there we go and that's what it is communicate yeah don't set unnecessary boundaries don't make people feel left out talk to them come really to a mutual it. understanding come to a mutual understanding yeah and with that, let's end on a happy note. This one is from, I believe, Jason Croissant. Croissant! So I was doing a session, and we were intimidating a person by chopping off their hand. That is what we did. I got to keep the hand and got to throw it at an enemy. I was so happy. <laughs> Story two. I was doing a variant D&D, &D, five torches deep, and we were trying to get into a door while our rogue was gone. We alerted some guards, and me and another teammate went near a gate like 30 feet away. Context, it was night and raining. The enemy didn't see us, but my other teammate just jumped into a nearby well and almost died. <laughs> More context, we were level one. The guards we alerted left the door unlocked, so my teammates just snuck in and used a charisma to get by while my character was waiting in the rain outside, waiting for the signal so I could go in. Later in that session, we were fighting a boss and I decided to hit the boss running at me with my hammer. Got a nat one, fell down the stairs, and was left with one HP. We made some big jokes and about that session and laughed a lot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, the fact that they're level one made that so much better. Like, wow. That, that, was, that was just a whole D&D session. Like that's what you get to experience in a D&D session. All right, I'm gonna keep this hand. All right, I'm gonna throw it at an enemy. All right, you see that well? I'm gonna jump into it. Oh, almost died. No, like, well, <laughs> got me there. what happens. All right, I'm gonna do this really cool thing. Nat one. <laughs> Yeah. That is literally d and in a nutshell right there. Love that. But anyway, thank you guys for watching our TGRPG horror stories. Hope you enjoyed the stories and also the uplifting stories. If you want to suggest your own uplifting stories, head over to our Discord and you will find it under the one called awesome slash funny moments and just post it there. I am Duke. This is wife. I am wife. We'll see you guys in the next video. Amy, do an outro. He does this to me every time. I'll just cry. <laughs>